host Norman Sanzo. Joining me today is Silver Quill. Burn the witch again. <laughs> Uh, I, I just realized something that uh, this is a, what, Little Witch back-to-back kind of thing? Yeah, something like that. My Little Witch. My Little Witch, all right. Little yeah. Witch Academia. It's not My nope, Little nope, Witch, doing, remember? No, we're transitioning in phases. Come on. <laughs> Gentle. You have to ease this sort of thing. Yes. So, anyway. Y'all going uh, to hell. <laughs> joining us today. Also is Sappy. Bubble bubble, toil and trouble. I will make sure that these people pronounce the friggin' name of the title right. I did it. I, I did. Well, okay, was... you pronounce it right, but say the correct phrasing of the friggin' series. It's Little Witch Academia. Oh, okay, okay. Sorry, I, also... I shouldn't be this adamant, but I am, and I don't know why. Uh, <laughs> I blame Bronicon also... stress. <laughs> I think that's past. <laughs> Maybe for you. But if you're saying we're going to hell, technically uh, Harry Potter and the witches would go to hell because they practice witchcraft. Uh, no comment. Oh, no. Uh, oh, actually, who was? Let me there are throw plenty in. of American groups that are... How about I just give you some oleander tea and we'll just continue on. Anyways. <laughs> oh, my. <laughs> uh, right. Anyways, uh, also joining us today is Totera. What is with all these witches anyways? Like, we got one witch here, we did another witch before, and now we're doing this witch. Yeah, I know, like, it's a witch back-to-back kind of thing, but, you know, honestly, I kind of wanted to jump into this one, because it was fun the last time, so I wanted to see how's this one going to be. So, so yeah. Little, 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 little Witch Academia. Thank you, Torterra. By the way, little did you know you were working with a witch all the time, the whole entire time. What now? <laughs> and his name is Torterra. Oh wow! Let me get, let me get my blue pokeball and then burn it. <laughs> burn the witch. <laughs> oh boys! But anywho, in this episode, we are going to review My Little Witch Academia. Uh, oh, he did it! <laughs> God, freaking! <laughs> yeah, season Why one, episode one. <laughs> A new beginning. What are they calling the Japanese? I don't know. But anywho, um, yes, we're going to get a new episode. <laughs> we're going to do this one. So this episode is also sponsored by Jeffrey. Thank you so much, Jeffrey. And I hope you are ready for what we are going to do because <laughs> uh, anime is not our forte. we're not. Yep. yep. Anime is not our forte, but reviewing is. So I guess we're just going to jump in. But before that, um, overview. The enthusiastic but somewhat under-talented Akko, along with friends Lotte and Suchi, trains to be a witch at Luna Nova Witchcraft Academy. Yay! Suchi! I don't know. I call... Sushi. I heard... <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. I used to call Sushi. I do just hear Suzy. Well, then what go with that Suzy? because it's the closest thing. <laughs> yeah, so, yeah, you, you know what? Yeah, tomato, tomato. So, hey, anyway. Susie, Susie, give me your answer, do. <laughs> so, anywho, before we head in, first impressions are in order. And, Silver, what do you think of the first episode? Well, this is the this was hilarious in its own right. When we first reviewed my <laughs> Little Witch Academia, yep, yeah. yep, I'm tempted to do it now by default. <laughs> uh, when we first reviewed Little Witch Academia, uh, we watched this episode by accident, Torterra and I. Mm-hmm. So when Norman was like, so what did you think of the dragon? What dragon? There was a giant bird. Yeah. yeah. And it was like, no, there was a dragon. Well, I saw this episode too. And they were in a dungeon. No, th- well, no, they were in the forest. No, they were in a dungeon. Yeah. It's like, tomato, tomato. <laughs> it's the moops, the mars, the moops, the mars. Who's on first? <laughs> I don't know. Third base. Wait, so did you guys like start this podcast? Like, you... Well, you started, like, the podcast with, like, thinking, oh, this is the first episode. And then you realize, okay, oh. Okay, Seppi, Seppi here, 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 here was the situation. Here was the backstory for this one. When we were supposed to review My Little Witch Academia, the first OVA, the pilot episode. Well, I got that part. Yeah. I kind of, okay, kind of my fault at the same time, too. Didn't really point out. And... The guys here says, oh, um, this one. Okay, I'll go watch the series instead of the OVA by the same name. That's what I did, yes. Yeah, but you you weren't on, right? 
She wasn't here yeah. the last time. Yeah, so. I, I didn't go on because, you know, I was informed, oh, we're not doing that one. It's like, okay, I'm just going to stay on the side. I didn't watch the OVA. I'm sorry, Norman. But this is the point. Um, so when we were ready to record, we, we I, I asked them, like, you know, out of curiosity, I asked um, Silva and Tara, so what do you think of the episode? Oh, it was a lot of fun. There was a cockatrice. And like, I, I, at that point, I paused. Wait, what? What cockatrice? Uh, did you guys see a dragon? What dragon? So, in other words, we all apparently watched the same episode except for Norman. And I just skipped out on it because I realized, oh, oh, okay, we were supposed to watch the OVA. I'm sorry, Norman. And then I decked out because I knew, yeah, I didn't see the OVA and I felt bad. <laughs> <laughs> Don't be. And yet, this was probably the best introduction because it shows... The very, uh, very start. And that works better in my eyes. The TV series was more kind of throw you into the deep end along with the witches. This one's a gradual introduction. So I got to meet each character. I got to enjoy them more uh, for their own strengths. And I think Akko is more endearing as she's just trying to get to the witch place. Now, I will say both first episodes of the TV series and the OVA... By God, this is as confusing as trying to talk about Star Wars movies. <laughs> well, I like the first Star Wars better. Oh, The Phantom Menace? No, A New Hope. But that's the fourth one. It's the first one. <laughs> it's, yeah. That's just confusing. No, but um, you know, but in all honesty, um, the, the OVA itself was not bad. Like, they had to rush things just because it was a pilot episode. So um, it was interesting in the way they, they approach it. But still, um, sorry for stealing your thunder, Silver. Um, anything else? Just that it's fun. Well, in some ways, it makes a lot more sense. And the witches are better in some ways and way worse in others. <laughs> all right, all right. And anyway, Sefi, what do you think of season one, episode one? I don't know what it was, but there was just a part of me who, like, I like the very beginning of the episode, the middle, like, kind of like the second ish act, like. I don't know. I just kept cringing, like, during the series. And I almost dropped it. Like, I, I had just gotten Netflix and whatnot. And this was one of the series that was recommended to me. And I wasn't that impressed by the first episode. And I ended up just stopping, like, watching it for a while. Like, after, like, oh, they they got into, like, the, well, you know, the, the broom thing. Mm -mm. When they were trying to get to the Academy. And just, I don't know. I didn't like it until, like, the second half of the episode. I'm going into spoiler territory. I'm sorry. But it was, like, you know, the second part of the episode when they entered the graveyard. Oh, okay. Like, that's that's when it finally got good for me. That was a graveyard? Yep. I remember, uh, I remember, uh, four. Oh, oh no, not I this might again. I thinking of a different... Episode then, sorry. <laughs> episode. Oh no, no, this again. <laughs> they they do no, get into yeah. a graveyard. It just wasn't in this episode. It's oh, been. Sh they do. They do. We. I I remember that episode. We're bad at this. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Nor Nor Norman says reviewing is our penchant, but apparently keeping track of episodes is not. <laughs> I never say we were good. I say we were decent. Did I? I, I think that too was a lie. <laughs> What else is a lie? <laughs> okay. My life. Uh, well, anywho, Tara, what do you think of this episode? Season 1, episode 1. I really enjoyed it. I mean, at the beginning, it was kind of cringy, like Safi said. But then later on, I enjoyed it. I won't go into too much detail, because I'm going to say that for my final thoughts. All right. Then. So anyway, as for me, this first episode, um, the very beginning of the season, is kind of interesting, because i seen the OVA, and the way that they introduced the characters there... It's kind of interesting. For this one, they really set it up. Like, oh, they tell Akko here is from this and this, and what's happening is that and that, and so on. And the way that they introduce the friends are interesting too. And straight away, we can tell that Susie here is a maniac. So, yay! At least we know what we we're working with right now. Best girl! Just saying. Alright. <laughs> So anyway, um, those are my thoughts for the moment. And well, 
if you are interested in checking it out, it's available on Netflix. And yeah, go check it out if you want to. Welcome back. So we start off the episode with a flashback. Well, for us it's a flashback, uh, but for the show it's kind of the beginning and so on. So anyway, it's um, Ako watching a show by the great and powerful Trixie. Uh, showing her magical talents and defeating a monster, quote unquote, and the... it, it was just a show. Yeah, so on. But I'm trying to think like, is it really a show? Because when we watch the Enchanted Parade, oh no, it's a big giant monster named Doomfist. He's trying to kill us. Ooh, what can the witches do? I watched the entire you series. Watched... There is no monster. And... <laughs> It's a show. Well, this was a movie we reviewed. Oh. Remember the one we talked about, the Enchanted Parade? I don't think oh, she was uh, here. Yeah, I wasn't here, here remember? Oh, no. no. <laughs> but, but yes, the monster called Doomfist, because everyone will accuse you of throwing the game, but you're not. You're just trying to play your favorite character. Who even plays Stop as being Doomfist? such a jerk. <laughs> I play as Doomfist. <laughs> I'm not throwing, you're throwing. I'm gonna one put. I'm gonna one put KO punch you <laughs> if I could ever actually get the aim down. Boys, but anywho, um, after Trixie performs her show, um, Ako was in the crowd and she was, um, what's the word I'm looking for? Inspired by this, and flabbergasted. Yeah, and also at the same time too, there's a subtle change, and you can also see Diana was in the crowd too. So that was kind of cool. Can you know? I yeah. I'm watching it as. I'm mostly seeing the centaur lady at the yeah. moment. Yeah, she but, is in the crowd. Yeah, she was yeah. in the crowd when before what? Um, Akko and yeah, Akko was hit by the waves. Huh. I will have to double check. You'll have to watch the entire Netflix series. Is what you're gonna have to do. <laughs> well, I've been doing that because I I enjoy this yeah. show. See, that's the thing. We we enjoy the show, even though if we get our facts wrong. <laughs> Diana oh, okay, is best yes. girl. Just saying. Actually, I do see Diana. Now that you mention it, I do see she's the only character in the audience besides Akko who's not colored in tints of blue. <laughs> yeah, I know, right? That's how you know it is the main character. <laughs> yep, you know she's special. We're sorry, everyone, but you're you have been relegated to third tier status because <laughs> you're blue. Dabu di, dabu die. Yes, but dabu di, dabu But die. anyway, um, after the show by Trixie, uh, I mentioned before, Akko was inspired by this. And when she goes older, she wants to become a witch. A uh, few years later, when she's older, I'm going to guess she's, what, 15 or 12? 14. 14, thank you. So when she's 14, she goes to the town, I got no idea, to start her life studying witchcraft. And here's the interesting thing. She goes to the location to look for a bus station that goes to her school. And when she asks the general public they got no idea what she's talking about there's no such place there's no bus station to go to uh, wherever she wants to go and once she sits down she looks at a map and she realizes, oh that's the place where i need to be she runs to the ley line terminal and uh, bumps into Susie. The last time an anime talked about ley lines, it was Outlaw Star. Oh, that's a while. And bo- and oh, I remember that one. Are you calling me old, Norman? No, it's been... I mean, that has been a while since I heard that episode or show. Oh, no, no. You're, you're implying I'm old. And you're absolutely correct. <laughs> hey, man. Like, Silver, have, do you remember Ranma One Half? Yes. Uh, that's how old that, I am. That's a great show. I remember man. that, too. That's a great show. I even have the manga. I have... Yeah, did I have the manga? I don't remember. Yep, hey, Silver, yep, Silver okay. just just to go minorly off topic, what what do you think would happen if you uh, ended up putting on the face app? Oh, no. Oh, my God. Oh, I've seen that. I've seen that. Oh, man, I did I, myself I, on that it's app. Like, I, I, I have a couple of theories, and they're kind of rude, and I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> I look like Santa Claus with that thing. No, nah, man, I, I yeah, don't want to I, give... Yeah, I'm not risking... I'm not yeah, risking my face over it, but yeah, I don't want to give information to the Russians, so no. Yeah, they've they've, they've done enough. Yeah. yeah. But, but anyway, continuing back onto the little witch, so uh, Akko bumps into Susie, 
And Susie says sorry, and she's very excited to attend Sid's school because uh, Trixie was her inspiration to be there and whatnot. And yeah, like, Susie here is not amused. She finds Aku very annoying and does a lot of things to hurt her. Yeah. Yeah, murder. <laughs> Maybe murder. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And let's just say that Suchi's first appearance here is very, very negative. Like, people, I would say that she was the, she, I would say that she's the bully of the series. Oh, no, we're about to meet the bullies in Google. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. But in yeah, that was that was part of the reason why I kept cringing because it's like you know, uh, <sighs> this poor girl. Yeah, yeah she's same. super <laughs> annoying, but my god, she just cannot get a break. Uh, well, it's one of those things where they want to show her that she's an outsider, and the reason why is when they reach the ley line station, is that the school enrolled a new student who is not from a witch's family. And uh, the only reason why they did it is for money and stuff. And when Aku was there, they wow. Okay. Anyway, when Aku was there, they they realized that oh, she's the new girl that we that they are talking about, and well, left her in the dust because Aku here got no idea what's going on, and they hate her guts. So yeah, this is the thing that drives me nuts. They. Accept Akko into the school. Sure, we'll take your money. <laughs> and then they basically establish a rule to get her ousted, <laughs> uh, expelled. You, we'll take your money, but if you can't make this opening ceremonies, oh, did we forget to tell you you need, need to be able to ride a broom to even get in? Well, too bad. Yep. This is so criminally irresponsible. It It puts the witches of the school in an intensely negative light. Not just the haughty girls who, let's be honest, there's... Sadly, some someone like that in every class. No, th this is the this is the management, the leadership of the school. But it's I guess it's one of those episodes, man. Like one of those stories where it shows them at a negative light, but it sets um, it sets a uh, conflict for the episode. Where okay, what's the conflict? Uh, it's for the characters to be at the school on time and well like i said it's the conflict like that's what they need to overcome how do they do it well we're going to talk about it soon enough i still raise objections because here's the thing you have to be good at writing a broom to get into our school well why then why do you have broom writing classes because it's kind of like learning english but are you required to speak perfect english to get into a school not really but you still have to learn it like, you know how to speak it, but you, well, still have to learn it. I just feel like they, they basically set Akko up to fail. Uh, I'm not doubting you there. And they, and they still take her money. Wait, it's the American education system. <laughs> this is why it pisses me off. <laughs> but anywho, as the three witches here uh, explain the current situation to Akko, that uh, to get into the school, you need to write a broom to the school and Akko here does not have a broom and got no idea what's even going on and that's the thing like how does she even got in there in the first place well she walked no, no to I mean the... is in general the... like she doesn't she got no idea how to do spells got no idea how to write a broom but she got in all she needs to do is just attend school my guess is that she's been tested to have the magical talent but I don't know. Maybe there's a radar for it. Oh, you mean like uh, I forgot his name, but never mind. My my witch dar <laughs> is going off. <laughs> yes, <laughs> like Merrick <laughs> and his radar. Yes, it's like with Black Clover. Even though Asta has absolutely no magic power, he still got into the uh, magic knights. We all making references here with their radars. <laughs> Okay, uh, let me think of one. It's like Alakazam right, with his spoons. <laughs> Alakazam. Oh, boy. Ooh, how about it's like Radar in MASH. Oh. Just cause. Oh, man, I remember that show. Poor Radar. Wow. Poor Radar. Oh, but anywho, carrying on. Um, so, the girls laugh at Akko and fly off leaving her alone to kind of try to get to school. 
Uh, she tries climbing but falls. And notice a United Witch coming and that's Lotte. Lotte falls and <laughs> she helps her up. And yeah, let's just say that there was an awkward interaction between Akko and Lotte where Akko was kind of forced to ask, would you like a lift? <laughs> Why was Akko forced to ask if she'd like a lift? Sorry, my bad. Like, Lotte. Yeah, character names. I'm still getting used to them. <laughs> well, I mean, she didn't really ask. She just kept being uh, very upset and doing those puppy dog eyes, you know? Yeah. And that's why I mentioned mm-hmm. um, Lotte was kind of forced to ask. Like, would you like a lift? Our heroine is not above manipulation. <laughs> mm-hmm. Uh, and name calling. Don't forget that. Well, I mean, that's just that's just part of life, little. Or I don't know, maybe the, maybe the witches are uh, little cat academia. <laughs> but and... Wait, I thought we were I mean, with academia a... just to trigger Safi. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, well, it is a school full of uh, young ladies, so yeah, there's bound to be a few cat fights. Meow. All I'm, all I'm saying is that I think you could, you could change one letter in the in the show title and it would be more accurate. Yeah. By the way, Sevi, when you mentioned cats, God, no. Oh, I know what he's talking about. I don't. Uh, the trailer for that movie, Cats. With Taylor Swift. Oh, wow. Well. Yep. well, I've already started coming up with my own uh, cat OC. <laughs> Uh, let's just say that we're going to date this review if we keep on talking about movies. Uh, yeah. Enough enough of this pussy fest. <laughs> wow. <laughs> Meow. So, anywho. Uh, as Akko and Lotte travel to the ley line, uh, it seems that the ley line is having trouble. And the trouble is caused by Akko carrying something fluid. And that fluid stuff is uh, pickled plums, if I remember right. Yes, yeah, it's pickled plums. So. Mm-hmm. And yeah, that caused the ley line to get volatilely angry at them and kind of buck them off the line and throws them into a dark forest. Which again, I feel like you really should have had a supervisor checking security. If these kids die, it's on your school. Well, now, now we know why TSA exists for... Well, TSA exists for a reason. For a reason, but it's not fulfilling that reason. <laughs> this school needs to have a... This school has a lot of issues. A lot. A lot, a lot. Yes. But, anywho, we are also introduced to a character. She's a witch, and it seems that she may be a teacher at the school. What was the school again? Luna Nova, yes, Luna Nova Witch Academy. And she sensed a disturbance in the force. And it seems that, well, students are thrown into the deep dark forest. Oh no. Although I do have to point out though that when she pulls up the map to, I guess, Stargaze or whatever, Mm -hmm. and where the dark forest is, it's, um, how do I say it in a nice way? The the star is under the guy's skirt. (laughs) I don't know what you're talking about. Like under the skirt. Let's let's pull up the map here. Like when she looks on the map to see where the students have fallen into the dark and, and where the dark forest is, it's under what seems to be someone's skirt. Oh, is it dark and damp? <laughs> I mean, I wouldn't. Are they out there in the bush? <laughs> I can't say anything to that. I also, got is nothing. it smelly? Okay. <laughs> <laughs> High five, Sula. High five. <laughs> You guys just let me... Like, I got no comment. <laughs> oh, you're going to comment. I got no comment to what you, you, both of you just said. We'll, we'll force a comment if we got it. <laughs> okay, all I can say is both of you, you sick. <laughs> We're sick. Oh, yes, there we are. <laughs> but anywho... I got nothing. And yet we're laughing. <laughs> I got rhythm. <laughs> Uh, boys, but anywho, um, once they, uh, <laughs> uh, Aku and the rest are kind of safe, they discover that Lotte's broom is broken, and they are stuck in the forest. Uh, I, I forgot the name of the forest. What was it called again? Uh, the Articulus Forest. Yeah. I'll take your word for it. I don't have a transcript handy to 
fact check, and I can't watch the whole episode while we're talking about the Shoot episode. That, I'll just copy paste that. Is that how you say it? I'm not sure. I, I'm not wrong. Artur- Arcturus. Yes, Arcturus Horus. Thank you. So, Suchi explains that, okay, people... Uh, Suchi, is, not Suchi. Uh, right? Susie. Susie explains that um, any wish to are lost in the forest will be, well, lost and unable to return. And there's a lot of danger here. Like, the forest wants to eat you, kind of deal. Everything wants to eat you. And so they try and find their way back. Uh, keyword here is try. And Akko discovers her stuff. And while do while picking up her stuff, there's a man eating plant called a mandragora. <laughs> mandragora? Mandrake. Sorry, mandrake. Huh, okay. But it'll be fine for you see they are no men. Yeah. It's only a man eating. See? My logic is yeah, false. Yeah, it doesn't matter. He still wants to eat them. And they run from the man eating or human eating uh, plant. And they stumble. And you know what? I, I think Lote here has enough of this and asked them to stand in this very specific circle. Once that Why happened... Why would Lote... No. Sorry, Suchi. Okay. I was going to say, it's like, I don't remember that. Yeah, Brain is trying to remember stuff. It's not a series I follow. Give me a break. So, and, and yet you're the one who requests us to watch it. Because it's fun. <laughs> Knowing names is hard. I don't remember names. We're still bad at this. I know. <laughs> but anywho, uh, so she tells them to stand in this circle. She activates a spell. And it's kind of a cage spell, which is, okay, awesome. She wants to keep them safe, right? Hell no. <laughs> no. No, 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 no. Yeah. So. <laughs> uh, I mean. If, if you believe that, there's a bridge in Brooklyn I'd like to sell you. <laughs> <laughs> but anywho, uh, so she tells Ako to say this spell and once she does that um hey big giant chicken yeah it's, it's not the dragon Actually, that norman said before yeah it's like what dragon what <laughs> the what, dragon in the dungeon what chicken what dungeon <laughs> we're in a forest we'll dungeons and dragons here <laughs> although some people wish because I keep seeing comments on Silver's videos like saying where's the D&D why are you not on brony D&D Oh, I'm not I'm Anyways. <laughs> I'm not. Uh, but anywho, um, anybody want to say anything about this scene? Yeah, Big Giant Chicken. Well, the Kentucky Fried Monster. Mm, I, I'm, sure, <laughs> I'm sure a lot of monster hunters would like to hunt this one. Well, I do find it funny, given that we usually do talk about My Little Pony, and Cockatrice ha- has and will be relevant to this show, <laughs> it's kind of funny to see this alternate take on the I believe it's an Indian monster. I remember so too. Yes, yes. And its gaze is not does not really petrify you. It may, it's lethal. It kills you. You die. Yeah. So I'm glad. I think they turned they toned it down for this guy. Yeah, because the, uh, anywho, uh, before I carry on, um, uh, Ako and Lote are kind of screwed because the big giant chicken wants to eat them, and Suzy is just using them for bait, and. Here's the thing. Um, I think Susie here is kind of a freak for poison. Yes. Kind of. <laughs> More than yeah. a little. So she's using them for bait because the caucus tree's feather holds a lot of poison in it, if I remember right. No, I, I guess here's the big thing that would sort of hang on it. Is she, I forget, is she putting them in danger but with a way to save them? Or is she perfectly willing to watch them oh, die? Oh, she's perfectly... Okay, watching them die because here's the thing: the thing that can kill them is either the fire breath from the cockatrice or the um, petrification gas from it. So either or, they're gonna die. Well, that's that's probably the biggest thing working against Susie. I mean, when she's perfectly willing to let someone else die, it's kind of hard to make a likable character out of that. She'll get better, but at the same time, you're like. Dang, girl, you I know. And here's the thing. When when I see her here, in my mind, I'm thinking like, wow, why is she so mean? Like, I, I know she can be a bit intense, but this is just outright. Okay, so I think I might have an exclamation for this. All Apparently, right. 
according to episode two, like the very next episode after this, I'm sorry. Apparently, she didn't even want to go, Luna Novo. She just wanted to get the poison and get out. <laughs> oh, okay. So, in other words, I don't think she actually cared up until, okay, well, they have poison here in the school, so I may as well stay around a little bit longer. Just a wee bit. A skosh. Mm, all right, all right. So, that explains a bit. But anywho, um, as she tries to... Well, she succeeded in stealing the cockatrice's feather and averts her... Uh, the cockatrice averts her attention to Su- Susie now and tries to stone breath her. So, Ako and Lotte got a chance to well, escape. And Lotte hurts her knee. Oh no, poor her. And Ako drags her up to the hill chanting a phrase that kind of reveals the shining rod. Oh my. Obey my rod. <laughs> so, <clears throat> anyway, Ako um, picks up the rod and, well, be the hero and save Su- Susie, which is really interesting um, because if it were me, I would left her for dead. Guess. Oh, left for dead? Would you at least give them, uh, like, some pills? Oh, yeah, pills, yeah. Yeah, I'll throw them the pill Pill. and then I'll run away from the witch. You just gotta watch out for those hunters. You know, hunters are not bad, but the boomers, god, those are annoying. There's a lot of things you gotta watch out for. (laughs) Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, especially the tank. Oh, god, no. But anyway, as uh, Ako distracts or attracts aggro from the cockatrice, she brings the cockatrice to the mandrake, which kind of ties the cockatrice up and gives them time to escape with Susie, well, carrying them all to safety. So she gets a little bit of redemption for putting them in dan- more danger in the first yeah, place. Yeah, a bit. Just a squee bit. Talk, talk about a morally amb- ambiguous character. Oh, right. Morally ambiguous. Moral ambiguity. Say it three times Moral fast. More the what? <laughs> wow, I appreciate that two of the three of you actually did that. Tried. Safi, have you anything to say for yourself, young lady? Why try when I knew I was going to fail? Oh, that you're never gonna get anywhere with that attitude, young lady. <laughs> Anywho. You don't you don't know unless you try. Yeah. Feeling Yeah, is... well, my throat hurts. <laughs> <laughs> oh boy. Well anywho. As they fly off, the cockatrice breaks free and chase them down. And remember when I say about fire breath? Yeah, cockatrice does that now. Yeah. So see, now it's a dragon. <laughs> oh, boys. So, anywho. It's a dragon tree. <laughs> oh, boys. But anywho, um, the dragon blows its fire and kind of destroys uh, Susie's broom. Now they fall to their death. You know, for a first episode, this is, well... Intense? Yeah, there's a lot of death, near-death experience. Hmm. Well... Oh. Well, maybe... Okay, let, let's just compare... First off, is anyone else getting just a little bit of a Harry Potter vibe? They're in a dark forest filled with magical creatures that want to kill them. Yes. Eh, maybe Harry They're Potter, lucky. too. But I'm actually thinking of the a book, The Magicians, which also is now a TV series, by uh, Lev Grossman. And he talks about how uh, magic, the further down you go, the more dangerous it gets. The more you learn, the more you open yourself up to the the perils of the magical world. So I'm just wondering, having this forest somewhere along the line, all these deadly creatures, I feel like when when magic is involved, the views on responsibility and safety shift. Like, you've got to expose kids to greater dangers because they're going to face even greater dangers when they grow up and graduate. Now, all of this is by accident, though. There's no supervision. So I'm just wondering, you know, how much can you judge the culture in this story based on how easy it is for kids to be murdered? Well, here's the thing at the same time, too. Uh, The way that they entered the forest was involuntarily. They accidentally jump off the ley line and got spitted out to a forbidden location that they're not supposed to go to in the first place. I agree with you on that, but then the question is why? What? Why wasn't there someone with some security uh, at the entrance of the ley line to say no liquids? 
Don't make me do a pat but search. But it's also the same time too because they never had a new recruit who was not from a witch's family. Aku was the first. So, well, here's the thing. Um, Everybody knows when you're starting any pain program is to remember to control S. Control S as often as possible. A newbie's not going to know that. Well, all the more reason that you have to put a... Uh, well, you have to p- make the effort to bring her up to speed. This is reflecting very, very poorly on the school. I'm sure to send them a stern <laughs> note. Yeah, but it's one of those situations where Ako is an outsider coming in. A fish out of water kind of story, if you would say. Laura, I, I feel like we're talking in circles here because I don't yeah, disagree I know, I know. with you. She yeah, is a fish yeah. out of water. But it's their responsibility to get her in the water <laughs> to help her learn to swim. And they're not doing that. That makes them a bad school. It is a bad school, and you should feel bad while attending it. <laughs> Safi, because you're about to die. Safi, would you yes. like some popcorn while I talk things out? <laughs> oh, yeah, totally. In I'd circle. totally take some. In, Thank you. In circles. <laughs> well, no, but uh, I, I agree with you, and it's hard to explain because, yeah, you know what, let's move on. So, anywho, uh, Ursula's there, <laughs> and while the kids are falling to their doom, Ursula... I got no idea how or what, but she tells Akko, from a falling distance, by the way, to um, say the spell. And with that, the rod that Akko's holding changed into an arrow and she shoots it to the ground, creating a ley line portal for them to fall safely in. So the answer to everything is just shoot an arrow. It's the Hanzo. Yeah, it works, right? Yeah, th- except when you're playing against him, and then I get all pissy. <laughs> uh, can't say wait, much, man. Does, wait, question. Mm-hmm. Does Silver get his own swear jar? No, it goes to yours. Aww. Oh, yeah, I remember we talked about that. Oh, wait, so if I so if I curse, it's it's Safi who has to you remember pay? Remember, you yep. were the one that well, made the rule. Yeah, that's the... That's not a word! <laughs> right there. There we go again. Oh, well, I'm well gonna... here's here's the thing, well. You're not gonna get any money out of me because I don't have any! <laughs> we'll see about after BronyCon. <laughs> Good question if anyone loves me enough to help me pay for my college education. Oh, boy. <laughs> Anyways. Yeah. Talking about education, we have a scene where the school or... The what you call this uh, opening ceremony is about to begin or is about to end? I'm not hundred percent sure. I think it's just starting up. Uh, as it almost comes to an end, I'm just gonna say if somebody would like to correct me later on, do so. I don't mind. Uh, the ground opens up with a portal and spits Ako and her friends out. Yay! And Ako celebrates with joy because she made it to the school and she will not be expelled. Woohoo! That's a great. Whoa. Wait, wait. No, did you just turn into Mario? <laughs> That's a great. She's going to practice the dark cards. I, Mama mia. I didn't say that. I am an, I am an Italian stereotype. <laughs> why, are you not, why are you not more offensive? So wait, wait. Any? We talked about the states and then Canadians. Now we're talking about Italians here? We're talking about the Italian stereotypes. Tatera, you got to understand the difference. No human being that talks like these. It's highly, it's highly offensive, I'm, and yet you're all giggling. I'm just imagining, while Silver's Silva doing this Italian thing, I could just imagine him moving his hands, like, in the Italian way. <laughs> I actually am. You <laughs> see? Oh, my God. <laughs> but anyway, uh, as the, uh, oh, I, I want to say vice principal or someone, uh, what was her teacher's name? Remember the Harry Potter teacher that turns into a cat? What was her name? Uh, Professor McGonagall? Yeah, Professor McGonagall here. Yeah, she tells uh, Akko that she's lucky and she should be honored by not getting expelled. Hang on, though. Hang on. Professor McGonagall from Harry Potter was actually amazing. You're thinking of Snape. This Uh, woman is like Professor Snape. I don't know. McGonagall (laughs) was actually cool. Yeah, but she's strict, too. Yeah, but she was strict in the cool way. Uh, but anywho, uh, she shows Akko to her, um, what is it called, this room, or dorm room, and shows her to her roommates. Luckily enough, by fate, she's in the room with 
Susie and Lotte. And here's the question that has been running in my head. If Susie knows Lotte or the roommates, why did she try to kill... You know what? A lot of questions. What do you guys think? Well, you know, they say that if if your roommate dies while you're at school, it's an instant A because of the emotional <laughs> trauma you must be suffering. So I think Susie is just... Uh, she's playing the long game. <laughs> She's like, hello, instant GPA. <laughs> oh, boys. But, uh, Seppi, you mentioned something earlier about Susie not being there, right? Oh, yeah. She basically said, you know, I only came here so I could collect some poisons and whatnot and then leave. But I'm going to stay because it turns out the school has, like, high-quality, prestigious poisons <laughs> that I could get a hold of. And plus, Akko's the best uh, guinea pig for those poisons. <laughs> yep. But okay, here's the thing. Here's the thing. Also, um, the episode starts after they return from their summer vacation. Ako being the new kid on the block, coming in fresh. So does that mean, uh, Lotte and Susie are kind of in the same boat too, or yes, no? I have no idea. Asafi, you got the no idea. I didn't. You got the no idea I, for, I for your know. friends. I, I didn't know they were starting like. After Japanese summer break. <laughs> <laughs> Actually, maybe that's a little confusing. Yeah because... yeah, because it's like the Japanese have like a weird school system because they start in like the spring. They also like to drive everyone to an early mental breakdown. <laughs> it's intense. But no, that's what I'm saying. Like the show starts off with uh, after them coming back from vacation or break or what is it? Well, either way. It comes back that everyone's a jerk to Akko. And while she'll have some she'll have some pretty negative moments over the series, it's still in her corner because everyone else is a bigger yeah, jerk. True, true. Uh, but anywho, uh, with that episode ends because, yay, all of her quote-unquote friends that she met are in the same room. Yoo-hoo. And all of her enemies are on the other side really, of the no? door. The whole school uh, is her enemy. If they wanted to turn her into the next Lord Voldemort, I wouldn't. Uh, I wouldn't object. Anyway, with that, we get our intro at the end. Huzzah! Oh, yeah, some enemies do. Uh, some enemies yep. do that. Enemies of enemies. <laughs> and with that, episode ends. So, uh, Silver, what do you think of said episode? Oh, I think this is a spicy <laughs> meatball. I am still making the Italian <laughs> hand gestures. Oh, I think all our Italian friends out there are probably going to want to demand to my head. <laughs> Why do you want to demand my head? Uh, you shut up. Shut Good up. question. <laughs> you shut up, <laughs> AFA. Okay. F- being real honest now, I-, I enjoyed this introduction. I thought this was fun. Akko, you feel for her. She's trying to overcome what is a very hard barrier between the magical world and the non-magical world. And I really appreciate the scene where she uh, she's told she has to fly out there. She can't do that. But she doesn't go home or mope. She tries climbing the vines. And yet there is still some immaturity as she lays on the guilt <laughs> to try and get uh, Lote to give her a lift. Poor Lote. There's a lot of great action. I love the Shining Chariot uh, intro. I mean, that shows the animation quality, uh, just the, the fantasy of this world, and sort of the fun spirit before you get into the near-death <laughs> experiences. Very important to have that before you go to the near-death experiences. True that, true that. Imagine for a moment if you open with someone nearly dying, and then you try and be fun and whimsical. It doesn't work. It does not work. Well, you gotta... Unless you're a little witch academia. But they started with the whimsical and then got yeah. to the deadly. Uh, and then back to the whimsical. Yeah, and the, back to the whimsical and then back to the near death and whimsical yeah. and near death. And that's the series. It kind of alternates between yeah, yeah. the two. But still, it's, it's a lot of fun, right? It is. Great fun. So, as a first episode, you would say good start? Strong start? Uh, Very good start. Very good start. In fact, accidentally watching this first made it easier for me to get into the OVA uh, as well. Okay, so what would you think if... Okay, here's the thing. What would your opinion be if you watched the OVA first before this one? Confused. Probably that I'd be like, well... well, Yeah, I'd be like, whoa, slow down. I feel like you're you're expecting me to know these. Wait a minute, you're pulling a a miraculous ladybug on me. (laughs) Everyone. Everyone's tried to make ladybug... A thing again. <laughs> Just like, stop. I'm supposed to know all these characters. I don't know any of you. And you're all sick. <laughs> you're sick. Uh, I cannot wait for that party crush episode. <laughs> Bye. But anywho, Seppi, what do you think of this episode? Yeah. Kind of 
kind of cringy, but endearing. Mm -hmm. Not really much to say other than that. What was the cringy <laughs> part for you? The cringy part, I guess, was like having to listen to Akko like while she was talking to Susie. I was actually kind of snickering when Susie like threw her in the river. It's like, okay, high energy character won't shut up about Chariot. It's like, please, just end her. <laughs> Really, you know, so, oh, okay, that's, that's interesting. It's like, uh, I hate you. <laughs> I, I, Akko is probably, like, my least favorite main character, not gonna lie. Uh, she just doesn't shut up. I think she, she'll grow on you. She'll grow on you. Uh, uh. <laughs> Wait, I forgot, Anyways. you already seen all of this, alright. Yeah, I've already seen all of this, and even that, it's like, okay, I'm good. <laughs> right. I don't need any Morocco in my life. <laughs> all right. What about you, Tara? Well, I really liked it. I mean, I agree, too, that the cringy part was with uh, Akko just constantly talking with Susie and whatnot. But at the same time, I, I still kept watching, and I was getting enjoyed by, like, she's not... Uh, basically a full-on witch, like she doesn't have a boom or anything, but I'm curious to how she goes through the school and learn magic and whatnot. Although, I mean, she's already made out of Play-Doh since she's been hurt so many times throughout the episode. <laughs> true, 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 true. But I enjoyed it in the end. All right. By the way, um, how do witches get to be in witch school in Harry Potter? They have special genes or that? Well, magical talent just seems to reside. So you're born with it or you're oh. not. Sometimes you're born a muggle. Oh. Or, or even worse, a squib. squib. What is a squib? I forgot. You are the child of magical beings, and yet you yourself have no uh. magical beings uh, ability. Okay. All right, all right, all right. It's been a while that I mentioned before. Oh. Also, based on what Safi said, I'm actually waiting for another spinoff. Akko's Modern Life. Akko's <laughs> <laughs> Modern Life. Oh, boys. But anywho, um, as for me, this episode, or this first episode, was kind of interesting. And it got me thinking that which do I like more, this one or the pilot? And there's a balance between the two. Uh, for character introduction, the first episode was kind of strong. It sets up uh, what this character is, what they do and whatnot. Yet the pilot episode or the OVA had a lot of action, adventure. And we can see the motivation of Akko wanting to beat the living heck out of Diana. Wanting to show that she's better than her and whatnot. And, but I do like the reveal of the shiny rod better in the episode. But, you know, there, there's a either or. And I feel like the dragon's much more menacing and so on. But that, that's just me, in my opinion. Probably because it's not a giant chicken. Uh, true that. But m may I say, Norman, that's very foul of you. Oh, what can I say? I just don't like to chicken out. Oh, that's a poultry excuse. <laughs> But anyway, uh, Silva, what are we going to do for next week's episode? Well, I believe it's time to go back from Little Witch Academia to My Little Pony. Academia. It's, ha it's hard to let either go. Yep. <laughs> it's also a question of which will annoy Safi more. Uh, Actually, I was so... okay with that. Oh, okay, well then. Well, we're going to seek some common ground with My Little Pony. Ah, that's going to be a fun episode. Well, it's, a, it's the return of Patton Oswalt's character, Quibblepants. Yay. Uh, that's going to be a fun episode. <laughs> so, it's good times. It's nice. Yes. It's going to be what the, uh, what you might call this, uh, callback extravaganza. Like, they, what? The show had Patton Oswalt, where Al, uh, Lena Hall, and so on. So, we gotta have to see what they're gonna bring out. Yeah. yeah. So yes, we will look forward to that. Yeah. Yes, yes. So anywho, if you guys have any questions, concerns, or suggestions for the show, you can contact us at dmbshowgmail.com. You can also reach us on the Twitters. The show's Twitter account is at dmbshow. And my personal Twitter account is at Norman Sunzo. 
and Silver, where you can define witches and warlords find you. Uh, do I want them to find me? Because I, I keep doing this voice, and I think they might want to lynch me. Why you want to lynch the Silver Quill? I'm still making the hand gestures. <laughs> I, 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 I think you see... <laughs> Uh, well, you're, you're making more enemies. If it's not from Twilight and her gang, it's from the witches from Little Witch. Yep. Well, there you go. <laughs> uh, you can find me on uh, Twitter under MLP Silver Quill. You can find me on DeviantArt under the same, where there are Pinkie Pie Says Goodnight comics and postings of my general uh, graphic drawings. Ooh, ooh, that sounds kinky. Oh, my God. My, ger- my graphics from my videos is what I should say. Ah, uh, yes. <laughs> And you can find me on Equestria Daily, where I will post uh, editorials and comic reviews on Wednesdays. And, of course, if you find me on the YouTubes, you can just do a search for Silver Quill or After the Fact and I Shall Appear. Huzzah! Yay! Much awesomeness. Much awesomeness. Oh, so sappy. Where can the good people find you? You can find me on DeviantArt, Instagram, Twitter, and basically any other form of social media under the name Anime Christie. I'll be basically just posting art, and right now, as this podcast rolls, I'm currently working on this sketch of Oleander Cat. And you'll uh-huh. probably never hear of it, but oh well. Work on it. It's gonna work. So She's hey, a witch. It's gonna work. I know it's gonna work. Let's hope. <laughs> anyway, also, uh, Tara, where can the people find you? Well, the people can easily find me on Facebook, DeviantArt, Twitter, or YouTube under the name Torterra1324, or you can just simply do a Google search on my name, and then I'm pretty sure all of those things will pop up on Google. <laughs> awesome, awesome, awesome. And also, please subscribe and rate us on iTunes, YouTube, don't forget to press the bell icon to stay up to date, and also Stitcher Radio, and also like our Facebook page. You can also catch us on com. If you'd like to support the show, you can do so at patreon.com slash show. With every support, you'll get a week's early access to review and discussion podcasts, exclusive and deleted content, and also a huge thank you from me. Talking about thank yous, I would like to thank Amy, Lucky Knight, Tristan, Starstream, Jeffrey, and also Master of Light. Thank you so much, guys. You're great. So anyway, I have been Norman Sanzo. I am the Silver Quill. I am the Sappy. And I am the Torterra. And we'll guys catch you next week with another fun episode. Yes, show. See ya. Burn the witch. Bye. Bye bye. I love Safi's hesitation. It's like, how do I say goodbye after you just said burn somebody? <laughs> uh, very, very questionable. <laughs>